What is up, family? This has been the wildest week in sports. So let's talk about it. First and foremost, you could be watching any show. You're hanging with us. We appreciate you. But let's talk about the biggest things, the biggest deals from the crazy week of free agency frenzy. I'm going to tell you the five biggest winners. Relax comfortably in your seat and let's go through them. Number one for me, the Houston Texans. Let me update you on all of the moves that they made. Now, most importantly, they added a pass rusher, Daniil Hunter. Hunter, he's had 87 and a half sacks. He's not even 30 years old. Joe Mixon, he's had over 1,300 all-purpose yards his last three seasons. And Al Shire at linebacker, 163 tackles. The head coach, D'Amico Ryans, he completely reloaded this roster. Think about it. On the outside, you now have Will Anderson as a pass rusher. You got Hunter as a pass rusher. In the backfield now, behind C.J. Stroud, you got Joe Mixon. What will the Houston Texans do this year? D'Amico Ryan's rookie coach, C.J. Stroud, rookie quarterback, went to the playoffs already. Imagine what they'll do with this extra talent behind them. They're my biggest winner in free agency. And number two, we talked a lot about them. The Pittsburgh Steelers. See, everybody wants to focus on Russell Wilson, and rightfully so. He's a big-time player. The Steelers only paying him $1 million, even though he has nine Pro Bowls in his career. Why? Because the Denver Broncos, they're still paying Russell Wilson $39 million based upon that contract. But Patrick Queen, to me, the biggest addition. I said last week the Steelers needed a linebacker. They needed a cornerback. They got them both. Patrick Queen, all pro last year. That's hard to do. Dante Jackson, 14 career interceptions. For this reason, the Steelers, I think, have really bolstered their roster based upon free agency. Free agency has been crazy. I know it's been hard to keep up with on Twitter. So let me help you on this show. At number three, the Green Bay Packers. Yee! Running back, Josh Jacobs, and you heard James Jones. He hype about it. Josh Jacobs, the man behind me here, he had over 2,000 total yards two seasons ago. Xavier McKinney, he is a stud at the safety position. Now, he doesn't make all of his plays with interceptions. I believe he only has six career interceptions, but it's not just about the picks. He comes downhill and he smacks you. And Keyshawn Nixon, consecutive. All pros, two consecutive seasons. What he does at the nickelback position and also what he does as a returner, it is outstanding. The Green Bay Packers, if they haven't surpassed the Detroit Lions family, they've definitely closed the gap. At number four, the Philadelphia Eagles, y'all. Saquon Barkley, he has gotten all the attention, rightfully so. Rookie year, 2,000 yards, 700 receiving, 1,300 rushing. He's a dude. But for me, it's about Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. I said the Eagles need a defensive enforcer. They do not have one. Gardner-Johnson is that enforcer. And Landon Dickerson, all pro, they retained him. Two consecutive seasons, he's been an absolute monster. With Jason Kelsey gone, you definitely need somebody within the interior O-line. I'm not talking tackles. Guard to guard, who is stout, and that's Lander Sickerson. And five is a little bit of a surprise. To me, the Dallas Cowboys. Reason I'm saying the Cowboys is they didn't need a lot, but what they needed, they got. The Cowboys desperately. And when I say desperately, I mean desperately needed a linebacker. Now, here's a little bit of the nuance of the conversation. Cowboys got a new defensive coordinator this year, Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer was a head coach for the Minnesota Vikings. Mike Zimmer had Eric Kendricks. Eric Kendricks, linebacker with the Minnesota Vikings. Eric Kendricks, now a Dallas Cowboy. Why does this make the Cowboys such a winner? Eric Kendricks had already verbally agreed to be with the Niners. The Niners need a linebacker because Dre Greenlaw is gone. After verbal agreeing to be with the Niners, Eric Kendricks, born in California, played at Cal, was with the Chargers, could have stayed in Cal to go to the Niners. Mike Zimmer said, no, I need my missing piece. The Cowboys did not need a lot. What they needed, in my mind, they got. They are my surprise biggest winner. Heading to the desk. Free agency has been crazy. Well, Sean, it's good to see you. <laughs> Wait, the Cowboys had a win. No, 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 no. I ain't seen you in about a month and a half. It's good to see you, sir. Yeah, man. So you look good. Most of you always tell me that. They you tell me good. that. You the good. things you say, they tell it to me. I look good. Happy to see you. Did you lose a shady chain? No, I still got it. I still got it. I mean, you know, I don't like the bling here and there. I got, I got the earrings on today. So. A little 60 piece. Oh, That's the Eagles all-time Russian leader. The man needs no introduction. It's great to have Shady back. The laughs, the energy, the vibrancy, it is all here. Far end, James Jones. James, let's start with you, big dog. Who is the biggest winner in free agency? You know what? I'm surprised you didn't have my team on the list. It's Kirk Cousins and the Falcons. I think the Falcons went to work. Okay. It's free agency. Let's, you get Kirk, right? Arguably, no, I'm not going to say arguably. The best quarterback in the division, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's easy, best. though. Yeah, easy. That's what I'm saying. Some, so now you, 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 yeah. okay. you had <laughs> bad, bad quarterback play last year. Yes, sir, you and your did, team, bro. even though the division was bad, week 15, they still was in the playoff hunt. You signed Kirk Cousins. Then you get Darnell Mooney. 
to go on the other side That's of Drake London yeah. with Cal Pitts uh, uh, and B. John Robinson. And then you bring Rondell Moore. Yeah, I like that Rondell one. Moore is the Swiss like Army knife. One. Now you got a guy that you can hand the ball off to, can run routes, a lot Her of screens screens. down the field. Yeah. I don't really know how you're going to deal with Kirk Cousins in this offense. You could run it with Bijan. You got a big-time tight end. He's going to be better with Kurt. Yes, you got a big-time receiver in Drake London. That's true. You get another solid receiver in Darnell Mooney. You get your Swiss Army knife in Rondell Moore. This team right here is trying to win this division. And with Kirk Cousins, they could get that done. They went to work in free agency. And then they just got Ray Ray McLeod, punt returner, kick returner. I like Ray Ray. So that's like another good move. Oh, that's my boy. Okay, Ray Ray. That's another good move. But I think they went to work this, this offseason knowing that they were that close to winning the division last Joy year. Joy Taylor, talk to me. Who was the biggest winner in free agency with all the craziness going Joy on? Joy Taylor talks. <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice to see the Falcons trying. Yeah, like, yeah they're trying. Season. They're finally trying. Because last year they weren't trying, and I'm very I'm <laughs> glad that they are. They're actually my second winner, mm. and mostly because of Kirk Cousins. Because yeah. I mean, there's two there were two guys really on the market with Russell Wilson and Kirk Cousins. We were gonna see where they went, and they upgraded tremendously at that position. And look, I don't I'm not exactly sure what Kirk is gonna be, but based off of what he does during the regular season, he's gonna help them tremendously. But I have the Steelers as the winners. Mm. All the things that you like outline. But if we're looking at what the Steelers needed and a position that is incredibly hard to fill at the quarterback position, you brought in somebody who ha- certainly has a higher ceiling than the other guy in Kirk Cousins. Mm-hmm. Way cheaper, but, I mean, who's – I mean, Kirk Cousins is very expensive. Anyway, who goes? <laughs> let's, let's, let's put some respect on Kirk Cousins and get in that bag. Very, very cheap. A, a Super Bowl-level talent. What he is right now, I don't know, but I don't know what Kirk Cousins is either, True. if we're being honest. So this was a position to fill. They bolstered the defense, which is always a, a, a point for them, and they were great last year, so make it better. I love all the moves that they've made, but I really feel like the Steelers are a team that we take seriously every year, but they can't be taken seriously in the postseason because they don't have the talent at the most important position. I don't know what Russ is going to become, but I think this is the best situation for him. I know we're going to pay a lot of attention to this team, and they can, they're can they excellent at drafting skill positions, so I don't worry so much about the moves that were made because one thing about the Steelers, they're going to draft a wide receiver. No doubt. That wide receiver is going to contribute immediately. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about the Steelers. There's just some teams that just know how to draft certain positions, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are one of them, so I love what the Steelers have done, and I'm really excited to see how the, all these moves play out. Why, why my man Kirk get so much strains on his, on his block today? <laughs> I mean, Kirk, Kirk, Kirk is, said he's the best quarterback in the division. Yeah, Kirk, but, yeah, but my you, dog, said, you set it up like he was about to say a whole lot more. Was like, 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 for a second. I, mean, I mean, Kirk is 1-3 and three in the postseason in 13 years. We, I mean, he... We don't, be care- we don't be caring about that. We care about what you do with the stats because the guy in Dallas does it every year. No, no. And we don't never, you know what I'm saying? We're aligned. Well, just, we ain't got to the losers yet, okay? Kirk, we ain't got to the losers. I like Kirk. I, I had Kirk in the second. I had the Falcons as number two. I think, I think Kirk's good. I mean, even with the Achilles, I mean, he's not like he's running and scrambling for first downs. No, he's he he going to sit back there. He's going to throw that thing. He gets scared. He might throw a pick. What? He's going to throw some touchdowns. Let me go to my winner for a Talk second, right? Winner. In my Don King voice, only in America, <laughs> that you could be an average or above average player and get $50 million guaranteed and get $100 million for a whole contract. Who that? Baker Mayfield! <laughs> Yo, he had no ski masks. He had no, 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 no weapons. He just came in there and gave my money. Came in there smiling. Yo! <laughs> and then they paid him, though. They paid the dude. Came in there I couldn't believe it. But you know what? I'm happy for him, though. Because I'm a player, right? No and, and if a player no, get that money, I don't care how you get it. Go on and get that, bro. As long as it's not against the law. Yeah. So I'm happy for him. I mean, let's think about his career. In six seasons, you've been the number one pick overall, right? Yeah. So that's, you're supposed to be the best player in the draft. Mm. That didn't work out. You, you go 16, six years, you've been on four different teams, right? You, you come for the Bucks out of nowhere, we'll give you a shot, right? We'll give you a shot to start. Not, a, not guaranteed, we'll give you mm-hmm. a shot to start. He, he wins out in, the, in camp, and then he takes an a, a average team. They're nine and eight, yeah. the worst division in football. They go to the playoffs, mm-hmm. right? They beat a bad Philadelphia team, and then it's like everybody's saying, yo, he's the savior. <laughs> and to give him $100 million? Oh, only in America. So, so you're saying he won. he won. He won. He won. Not the Bucks. <laughs> he won. He won. And to think that a guy like Baker Mayfield, who, who's like the storyline. I love the storyline for sports. They can have a, 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 a movie about this, right? Walk on, become the Heisman. You go to the NFL first, pick oh, overall, oh, imitating uh, Brett Favre, <laughs> writing all this crazy stuff. You get the league, you was kind of average. You, 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 in six seasons, you had two winning seasons, right? You go to the Bucks, you got 98, y'all barely get a winning record, and then they pay you $100 million. Oh, that's only in America. So, I'm gonna get, hey, Baker Mayfield, show me how to, because I'm trying to get Foxy me that money. So, let me know how I gotta do it, because he done did it. Wow. You could argue the same thing for Kirk Cousins. For no, you can't. No, no you can't. You could. They're not, they're we not got more playoff wins, the sir. They're not in the same boat. Don't, nah, I'm not going to let you do this. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. What's a, who's a better, I'm be still sick. What's a better organization, Washington or Cleveland? Washington. I mean, they're the same. <laughs> Washington. <laughs> who's a no, better quarterback? Sorry, who's a better quarterback? Let's just, let's just, uh, no, I, I can't go there with y'all. We what? talking about football, you can't go there? What Baker Mayfield did in Tampa in one year this is, is more impressive than what Kirk Cousins did with Justin Jefferson, with Dalvin Cook, with Jordan Addison, with uh, uh, TJ, who am I tight end with? Uh, 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 what are we doing with here? With Hawkinson. What are we doing here? What, 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 what we're, we're, doing, we're doing what I'm doing what Baker so, did. Overachieving. So, okay. Overachieving. Okay, cool. Okay, that's well, what I'm you doing. Got, you give him Landry. You give him old Dale Beckham. You give him, what's the running back? Nick uh, Chubb. Nick Chubb. I mean, we, we could do this all day if you want to do this. Landry. I said Landry already. Oh, we could do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave you a playoff win the first year. When he had Kevin Stefanski. Acho. Meanwhile, Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins have been in the league since I came to the league. I've worked four jobs since. This is funny. Me and Kirk Cousins came to the league at the same time. I've worked four jobs. Kirk got one more playoff win than me. One more playoff win than me. I've worked four jobs, James Jones. I four mean, of them. Acho. Four of them. Are y'all serious? Acho. I am. You can't be serious. So let me ask you a question. If, if the open market, which it really was, you see what guy got paid some the, the money money. And, and one team, if the Bucs didn't pay Baker Mayfield. Don't do this. Who else you think is gonna pay him that money? Don't I'm asking ask your question though. Don't do this. Because if you do recall. Kurt had a, a little bidding war. People wanted him. AJ had multiple calls. Baker was like, yo, please let the bus call. Please. Acho, we talking this about... Ain't, this ain't even serious, man. a dude that's been on four different teams, not by choice. Kirk has been on three just by the way. By choice. By choice. By choice. Do the math. Do the math. Three in 12 wait, years wait, or five? By wait, choice. Wait, wait, wait. And talk, guaranteed. This is are funny, are though. Are talking about Hold who on. is better at making money? Oh, no, I'm who's better at quarterback? Better at Ask that, Joy. Ask that, Joy Taylor. who's a better quarterback? Let's just stop there. Free the money. This year, who do you think is going to be... Last year, who's a better quarterback? He got hurt last year. Okay. Um, Kirk, Kirk is definitely better at making money. There's no question no about No doubt that. about that. He might be the best no doubt about to that. ever do it. Who's a better quarterback? So you take I it. think Kirk is better. I trust Kirk more of course. in the regular season. I trust Kirk not to do anything differently than he was doing before he got paid and after he got paid. All of those things I can't say about Baker Mayfield. I don't even know what I trust. What can you s- Hold on, before you go, because okay. you love Baker. So I, can we just box you out? <laughs> Since you're speaking up for... What do you love better about Baker than you love about Kurt? Absolutely nothing. But I can that's tell what I'm saying. I can tell other, Let me other tell than, you. other than Let me the tell playoff you. record, I'm saying, which is a big deal. I, I, I'm Super saying Bowl, like you, yeah, he did a lot Kirk, for the wins. Kirk does. I mean, Kirk got smoked. Kirk got smoked in the last time he played the playoff game. Like, in, what, what are we talking in about? In Kirk Cousins' tenure, their most memorable playoff moment in Minnesota. In Kirk Cousins' yes, tenure, I, I the, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I get just a little bit of attention, yes, James Jones? Yes, I'm in Kirk Cousins' tenure, the most too. memorable moment in Minnesota was a Case Keenum miracle. Not even a Kirk Cousins miracle. So you telling me while you were there, the most memorable moment that your fans had, you weren't even a quarterback for? That's terrible, man. The most memorable is, moment of Kirk so, is them being 13 and 3. Everyone mad at us for not talking about it. And so, then losing in the first round. I just think, to the I think Giants, that, Daniel they, Jones. I think that. Schmack. Yeah, I mean, losing to Daniel Jones and the Giants is not good. tough. I don't think. Schmack. I think that Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback. And the, everybody, and the market, everybody in the world would say and that. The market reflects everybody that in the world would say that. So, no, yeah. not disagreeing with you there. Not disagreeing. I'm just saying, I do think it is impressive that Kirk, with the playoff record that he has after 13 years, mm. being 13 oh. and 3 and getting to the playoffs and losing to Daniel Jones and the Giants, and being how old is he? How old is Kirk? 35. 35 coming off of an Achilles. Yeah. That he just got a bag. I think it's. I, I I'm happy for Kirk. I mean, I think I'm it's happy great. One guy was a plan. One guy was a starting quarterback, yeah. though, right? He ain't had no breaks and all this other but play around though, stuff y'all got going on. For me, this is why. This is play, play, James. Don't take it serious. This, they this is why they I hate like when you go to these stats and these playoff stats and all that because it covers our eyes up. Don't cover my it, eyes it up. does. When you, when you watch Kirk Cousins <laughs> play the game of football and you watch Baker Mayfield play the game of football on four different teams getting cut, released, and They're all that. They're not comparable. They're not comparable. Whoa. It's not comparable. They are. What, 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 was Kirk's, what was Kirk's question? Uh, um, guaranteed money, $100 million, right? $100 million, $100 million guaranteed. $100 million. Dollars. Double Bakers. Okay, I, double Bakers. Double before. Bakers, right? Because Kirk Cousins is better. Yes. But am I paying you $100 million? To, to do what? Win the worst division to in football. To do what? Or to maybe to get us a what? playoff game. Thank You're you. Paying him hundred million dollars to do because what? Because he's a really good because quarterback and he's going to get so you he's to really the good. playoffs. So Kirk Cousins pay, is you, really good. You, you pay him that because he's the best quarterback in free agency. No you need question. A and he's Kirk going Cousins to get really so, 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 so you. So hold on. She asked you a question, right? Great question. Right. I that, think so. Let's ask the same thing about the other guy. 
I don't. I, listen, I don't. I don't think that. I think that Baker robbed the Bucks. I don't think that. But like, I, like, I don't. I'm I, just like, saying. Good for him. But I'm saying. I don't, that, anytime Baker's ever been put in a position where he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder, he falls apart. That's true. So I, I don't like. I'm, not, I'm glad he shit. made his money. I think he played well that's enough true. to earn his money. That's I think shoulder. they didn't have a. I think that's they true. didn't have a, an option. So I'm with Shady. Good for Baker. Like he went in there, played well enough to get this money. They gave him the money. But Bro, like, like uh, they did all that, and then they, Kirk Cousins gets yeah. signed, and the they're first, not even favored really, to win the, the first division. pick in the draft, yeah. and 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 we almost whispering the words "bust" to keep yeah. it a buck. Let me, hold on, let me let me clarify because I did I, I misspoke. I misspoke. Let me That's clarify. Serious? Minnesota was thirteen and three with Case Keenum. Thirteen and three, Minnesota Miracle before Kirk got there. Kirk mm-hmm. inherited that team. So let's let, let me clarify where I am at now. Obviously, we have to go to break. Is high level. Baker Mayfield, and I don't know how we got to Baker and Kirk, but I, anything I'll, that any... I, I'll take responsibility. I'll say it like Don King brought him up. <laughs> anything that Kirk Cousins does, or I believe that he has done or can do, I don't doubt that Baker can do. Kirk, you can go 9-8 and eight and go to the playoffs, cool. Baker, you can go 9-8 and eight, go to the playoffs, cool. Kirk, you can win the division. Oh, Baker, you can win the division. Congratulations. Y'all can both have 11 win teams. You can have, it's cool. It's so, going to look better when Kirk does it, I think. Yes, but when Kirk looks bad, oh, my God. Remember the Eagles last year? You watched the game in my crib. Yo, Week three. Baker ain't going to of, of course he has. Many times. That's why he's on the That's, That's what I'm saying. I think we're all. No. Well, we three are saying. Acho. No, no, hold on. Acho is higher up. We gotta go to break. No. no. Hold, hold on. <laughs> You watch a lot of film. I do. You have your, Too either much. your iPad or your laptop. Yes, sir. You mean to tell me over their careers? Even though Baker has more playoff wins, watching these two play the quarterback spot, you're saying that Kurt is not better than Baker? Kirk is better over you there. Wasting time, James. No, I, no, I, I, you heard this, me. I answered the question. This is play, play. Hour. I answered the question. Let me know when we do it for real. I answered the question. I said, "We do for real." I'll be back. I said, "Over the course of their I'm still careers, sick. let me come back." <laughs> over the course of their careers, Kirk Cousins is better. Who do I believe in more going into next year? Baker Mayfield. Okay. Simple as that. When we return, we gave y'all the biggest winners of free agency, but we got to look at the flip side. I don't want to do it, but we have to do it. Who are the biggest losers? Is your team going to be on the list? And I think the Bengals' Super Bowl window might be shut after this ragged free agency period they had. That's next on Speech. Family, we just talked to you all about the biggest winners in free agency, but who are the biggest losers? And why is Kyle Shanahan's face on there? Can y'all fix this? Call in. Get Kyle Shanahan off the Biggest Losers graphic. But I will say, the Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence ones, those are looking accurate. Now, Joe Mixon, he's gone in Cincinnati. Houston, they got Joe Mixon. Kyle Shanahan has had some moves at his hands. Remember, they were spurring the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. But when we get to the Biggest Loser, I got to ask you, Joy Taylor, who do you think it is? I know you have them on your Biggest Winner list. Oh. Although it is kind of far down. <laughs> I do like the addition of Eric Hendricks. I like that move. But overall, the Cowboys haven't, haven't done much. Mm. Now, part of that is because they have a lot of people they have to pay, and they don't have a lot of money. And part of the reason why they don't have a lot of money is because they waited to pay Dak Prescott. <laughs> and part of the reason they waited to pay Dak Prescott is because they made a very silly move of paying their running back that they then decided they didn't value very much <laughs> before they paid their franchise quarterback. So it's tough for me to look at what the Cowboys are doing and say – you know, you should be being more active because they don't really have the resources to be more active. But why don't you have the resources to be more active? (laughs) Well, you could argue you have people that you drafted that you then have to pay. You have Micah Parsons. You have C.D. Lamb. Also, you have to figure out the DAC situation. So they put themselves in a situation to not be active in in this period, but also you keep hitting a wall. Mm. So what do they need, right? They filled a need in Eric Kendricks. Okay, great. So you filled a need. Mm. Do you feel do you feel like that makes you that much better in the in the scheme of what the Dallas Cowboys keep running up against? I didn't think that the defense was the issue last year. Yeah. Mm. So I can't with Shady. <laughs> I'm trying to put it in this. I think if the Cowboys are, I do like the Kendricks move. I understand yes. why they're in this position, but look, the, you know, they're apologizing to the fan base for a reason. Yeah. Like they're having to, to explain themselves to the fan base. For a reason. So they, they also feel like they haven't done enough in free agency. Here was my thing, with, which why I like what the Cowboys did is, because, Joy, as I thought about the Cowboys having a really bad free agency period, I asked myself, Shady, asked myself, James and Joy, what did the Cowboys need? Linebackers. 
Because when I think about the Cowboys' defense, you still got Micah, you still got D-Law. You drafted a first-round D-tackle last year out of Michigan. At cornerback, you still got Bland, you still got Dig, uh, Diggs. At safety, you still got Hooker, you still have Wilson. I believe Curse may still be coming back. I think you still have Curse. So what do you need? Yeah. Offensively, you need a running back, but Cowboys just going to go draft the running yeah. back. So I'm like, I'm not disappointed, James, or Shady, in what the Cowboys did. Though they didn't do a lot, I don't think they needed a lot. But Shady, who's your biggest loser? Yeah, and to piggyback off of that, I didn't think the Cowboys needed much. Look at that roster. That roster is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. They need one position they got to change. <clears throat> a quarterback. Uh, what was the oh. question? What did you ask me again? Biggest loser. <laughs> Where's my notes at? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the Bills. They lost a lot. Lost. And they didn't put nothing back. Right now, I, I'm not great at math, right? I'm good with contracts, I'm not good at math. You put some in there, you take something out, yep. you got to put it back. No they doubt. didn't do that. Jordan um, Poirier. Jordan Poirier, right? Hell gone. of a player, all pro safety. He's gone, right? Gone. Michael Hyde. Gone. He's gone. Leaders, too. Right? Leaders. You, you look at the the, the, uh, the cornerback. Tredavious White. White. Gone. He's gone. And then your best players on defense, them guys are still injured. Yep. Matt Milano. Milano. I don't know how he's going to come back off the knee injury, right? Von Miller, my boy, we still looking for him. Still trying to find him. Right? Um, Stephon Diggs, so many rumors up and down. Josh Allen's my boy. It's my young boy. I said, yo, what's going on with that? He couldn't even really answer me. That, that scared me. Like, yo, what's... So if you don't have the wide receiver that's going to be in place, yep. then you lose Gabe Davis. Right? What we doing right now? True. And Buffalo, for you guys to be a playoff contender, a Super Bowl contender, every year we talk about it, even Josh Allen being an MVP candidate every year. Where is it at now? That's good. Because you go from being at the top of the charts, right? Yeah. I don't want to see you at the bottom. That would hurt me. Ask Belichick how I feel. Yeah. So they my, they, they my loser. Let me piggyback on that because it's so most seamless. I got the Bengals as the biggest loser. I think it's a lot of Ooh, this the issue Bengals. I got uh, the, the Shady has the Bills with. If you are the Bills, you got Josh Allen, and you're trusting that Josh Allen can cover up all those warts. Now you're doing the same with Joe Burrow and the Bengals because you lost your our right tackle one. You lost your RB one. You lost your wide receiver three, and your wide receiver two is demanded to trade. So if you're the Bengals and you're Joe Burrow, you're going without receiver three, potentially without receiver two, without RB1, without RT1, and Cheeto Bay Awuzie, a cornerback, you're losing him as well. I personally have never seen Joe Burrow play on a team without talent. I remind y'all at LSU when they went 15-0, he had Randy Moss's son, Thaddeus Moss. He had Clyde edwards helaire first-round pick. You had Justin Jefferson. You had Jamar Chase. That was his backfield. I didn't even mention the defense where guys like Patrick Queen and Devin White existed. Didn't even mention that squad. I believe Queen was on it. I don't think White was. One of the two were flipped. So with that being said, James, yeah. to me, the biggest losers are the Bengals <clears throat> because Joe Burrow's going to come back from his injury and be like, where everybody go? <laughs> and it's going to be a real bare locker room in there. Yeah, yeah. Chase going to say, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and throw it over here, dog. Um, for me, it's Jacksonville. Yeah. And I know they just signed Armstead, but offensively. Yep. Your quarterback without Calvin Ridley and Christian Curtis, 12 and 26. Stats not really good. He has not shown you that he can win with average cats. And you lose a number one wide receiver, Christian Curtis coming off an injury, and you bring in Devin Duvernay? And and, and no disrespect to these players, but he ain't Calvin Ridley. Of course not. You know, you bring in Gabe Davis, he not Calvin Ridley. So offensively, my weapons around my young quarterback has gotten worse. And he's coming off of one of his worst years. And then not only that, you say, we're taking some key pieces away from you to help you succeed, and we're going to trade for a first-round pick to look at you just in case you mess up. Mm. So in my humble opinion, the Jags lost. Trevor Lawrence has not gotten it done with average dudes, and you didn't put nothing around him to be able to help him succeed this season. I mean, Calvin really is good. He's real Christian good. Christian Kirk good, coming off injury. What he going to look <clears throat> like? Your quarterback 12 and 26 without both them on the field. One of them ain't going to be there for show. What are, you, what are you going to do, and are you going to deliver to be able to help get this offense moving in the right direction? I don't believe it. It's a fascinating free agency period because I feel like this year more than any year, quarterbacks are going to be asked to do a lot more. Again, I was thinking that as you they were talking, James. Like I'm like, Trevor Lawrence, I haven't seen him without talent either. No. What did I tell you about Trevor Lawrence? I'm like, because in college he had ETN, he had T. Higgins, he had John Ross, he had Amari Rogers, and I'm like, dang, like, can Trev, Trev has never looked good without the cupboard being stacked. Stacked. Mm-hmm. So, go ahead, Shady. No, I'm saying, thought. but what did I tell you about? We <laughs> argued about this, James. We did. What did I tell we you about did. Trevor Lawrence? We did argue. What did I tell you about him, though? He's an okay player, right? A lot of hype coming out, high school. was so great. Get to college. He's surrounded by all these great athletes. The same issue we have a lot of Ohio State players. That's mm-hmm. why it was so hard to really grade 
CJ Stroud because everybody Ohio State be good, everybody. right? From the backups to the, the starters, everybody look good. He goes to Clemson and lights it up. Everybody's playing with all Americans, yeah. even the backups. Yeah. So now we get to the NFL. What's he gonna do? He's been okay. We want to praise him because well, nobody wants to be wrong. No scout wants to be wrong, but he's he's okay. He's an okay player. Your guy. And he needs weapons. Because if not, he's going to be the same guy we've been seeing the last couple of years. A lot of hype without no production. Fair to say he's a jag? But he has a good coach, though. And I will say this, though. Just a guy. <laughs> but 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 he does have a really, I mean, it's really fair good to coach. Say. He gonna be alright. He's gonna be alright because the coaching guy, Doug Peterson. Yeah. Doug Peterson's pretty good. <laughs> I don't know if you want to stand on it, but. <laughs> oh no, no, no. I, I, I stand there and I said about it. Think and he's just a guy? I, mean, I think he's good. I think he's, I think he's a, a good quarterback. I don't think he's nothing special. I don't think he's nothing like generational. I don't think he's nothing they said he was before he got there. Because you remember what they were saying about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah of he's course. Nothing, he's nowhere near that. You put him on Baker level? Don't do. Don't yeah, he's do he's probably better than Baker. Baker's bad. like. I mean, Baker's. I'm just asking the question. Yeah, Baker's probably yeah. like. He's okay. We're getting crazy. <laughs> Family, the next topic is probably the best topic. Saquon Barkley was spurned by the New York Giants. He's now a Philadelphia Eagle. But did he deserve better? This isn't just a conversation of money. Bring him this home. is a conversation of truth of the NFL. We're going to unravel some things, and we're going to go there next on Speak. Bring him home. All right, family, we are on third and long. It's my favorite topic of the day. Saquon Barkley enters one Nova Careway. That's Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Right there is the team meeting room where all the players gather, and Saquon gathered up front to address the media. Remember, he is the Giants' fourth all-time leading rusher, but walks away to join the Eagles, where I'm sitting next to their all-time leading rusher. Hey Saquon Barkley there next to Howard Eskin, a beat reporter for the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, former NFL executive Joe Banner, he had some comments on the fallout. Saquon of New York saying, the deals that are out there, I think he's the one I have the most sympathy for. I feel like Saquon is entitled to a lot more than the Giants have indicated they offered. I would say Saquon, I would say the Giants haven't been fair. Close quote. Um, Shady, you're the Eagles all-time leading rusher. Mm -hmm. Saquon Barkley, he is now on the Eagles. He's with us. Saquon Barkley, they said they didn't do him right. But I know for certain the Eagles didn't do you right. So of anybody to talk about a running back being done unfairly, there is no more qualified person literally in the world than LaShawn McCoy to talk about a running back being done fairly. So I'm all ears on this one. Yeah, um, Does Saquon deserve better from the Giants? First of all, Saquon, congratulations, you back with the birds, baby. <laughs> you, with, you with the birds, you with the bird house, with the bird nest, come on over. And I'm gonna say, you know what, they didn't really do him wrong. I like that. No, they didn't. I'm cool with that. So they never offered him a contract, okay? Now, let's say they, they offered him a small contract. It could be disrespectful. So if you really don't want me, I guess it'd be cool to be respectful. You give me a bull crap contract offer that I know I'm not going to take, that you know I'm not going to take. I don't want to deal with that. Fair. I'd rather you do, you know what, do what they did. Hey, we don't give you no offer. Yo, do your thing. Go over, go over wherever you want to go. Who will give you that money? Take that. And I'll go my way. You go your way. I respect it. That's doing business. Because I don't want to be playing this game where you know I want to be here, right? And you act like you want me to be here, but you really don't. And you give me a play-play jokingly contract? Nah. So I like that, right? And now Saquon knows where he stands with the Giants. Yeah. Because even with Philadelphia, and I can't go into all the details, but Chip Kelly kind of got traded me, right? And then the people in the house from, from the top to the bottom, some way we kind of talked about it. Yep. And they were trying to get me back. To, to Philadelphia from Buffalo, right? It didn't work out because at the point, I, at the time, I was too viable you know, for Buffalo, so they wouldn't let me leave. But anyway, all I'm saying is, at least I know where we stood and where we stand. That's With good. Saquon Barkley, it's like, yo, if, if, if you give me a, a, a jokingly contract, I don't know where you really stand. Now I know where you stand, and I'm happy with that. So even when I'm done with Philadelphia, whenever it may be, it could be 10 years from now, whatever, it was a new contract, whenever it's over, I'm going to go somewhere else other than New York because I know where we stand. And I like people to, to, to show me the type of respect that you, if it's either good respect or it's bad respect, and that's disrespect. So I'm cool with the decision they did. That's one of your best takes. Put that on your Mount Rushmore. No, I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. The mountain. Uh, I agree with Shady wholeheartedly. I'm going to be quick, and I'm going to be brief on this one. The NFL is not about being fair. The NFL is not about players getting what they deserve. Um, James Jones, I don't believe that the Packers were fair to you. No. No, they weren't. They did you dirty, too? Did him dirty. Um, nah, nah, yeah, got me up out of there. I got released 
Two days before Thanksgiving, Chip Kelly told me we're going to sign you back on Monday. Go enjoy an extra long weekend. I never Shit. spoke to him again, mm. so I wasn't done fairly. Shady McCoy, we were teammates in Philadelphia. You're the Eagles all-time rushing leader after just six seasons or something like that, and they traded you for Kiko Alonso in the back of Lay's sour cream and onion chips. Mm. So I don't think you were done fairly. With no dip. No dip. Come on, man. Kiko Alonso. So with Kiko. that being said, <laughs> nobody Kiko gets Alonso? done fairly. I just yeah. showed y'all the different steps of NFL. I played my little four years yeah. practice squad active. James Jones played his nine, led the league in receiving touchdowns, won a Super Bowl. Shady played 12, led the NFL all-decade team, this, that, and that, won two Super Bowls, and all of us were done unfairly. Ain't no such thing as fair. Furthermore, Saquon in New York, he didn't earn the right to be done fairly if there was ever a fair. It's not like he played for 18 years in one organization. Nah, 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 nah. Ain't no such thing as fair. I can't pity him. It's how the game goes, which is why I'm glad he went to go get his money, and I applaud him for getting paid. But nah, I, well, I don't even know. No. Is um, loyalty and disrespect, is that similar? Talk to me. Um, um, they're, they're, yeah. in the, they're in the families of emotions that shouldn't be yeah, yeah. business. Because I think what you guys are talking about a little bit is loyalty. It is zero loyalty. They'll get you up out of there. But I think this is disrespectful. Number one, he was the best player on your offense last year. And none of us were a believer in Daniel Jones. And you paid him and gave him all that money. Mm -hmm. And you made Saquon Barkley play on the franchise tag because he did not want to pass up all that money. You know, sit out a year and lose out on $12 million. So he came back. He had to sign it. You guys, didn't, you guys didn't extend him, give him a contract. He didn't make no money. Then this year, I believe he's still the best player on your offense. And you don't offer him a penny? I, I just think the way they did Saquon over these last two years is disrespectful. And, yes, Saquon is blessed. He went to Philly, went to a better team, got, way more, got money. more money, all that. He's blessed, right? He was going to be in a position, of the type of player he is, to make money anyway. But how they handled him, I think it's disrespectful the way they handled him. Handled him. You, you made me play. I could have got hurt last year playing on a one-year contract and you guys not extending me. But I came back to make my money. And now, this coming offseason, you don't, free agency, you don't offer me nothing, not a penny, not hold a on, dime. Hold on, hold on, James. I just think that's disrespectful. Hold on, bro. This, this, wait, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the NFL? I'm just trying to figure out what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I think we are. What are we talking about? We're talking about the NFL. NFL ain't no friends? Ain't no, is it? Yeah, or I'm tripping? Just, I've been going for three no. days, two days. I don't know. No, I came back right. to some, this some like, emotional, emotional brotherhood. It's not no, that. No. It's about getting your money no as soon as possible. Got that. So my thing is, how's it disrespectful? If let's say they didn't want to pay him. Yeah, they did. I don't want to. I don't want to pay you. Yeah. So why is it disrespectful? How? How? I think it's disrespectful the type of player he is. So you're not. Let me say this. Let me say it again. Let me say it again, James. If I don't want to pay you, I don't have to pay you. You don't have to pay so me. I'm going to go find my money somewhere. And that's stop. That's what he did. No doubt. So how's it disrespectful? Because if I'm looking at an organization as a player as Saquon, you ain't going to offer me nothing, the type of player I think I am? That's disrespectful. And then last year, I'm the best player in the office, okay, and so, you don't want to offer so me nothing last year? Say this. So maybe disrespectful to, to, to Saquon, right? But I'm looking at this as the NFL, and every team don't like the way you play. No I've been there where I'm like, wait, time out. You think this dude is as good as, as, good as me? And they don't say, yeah, but they hear it. are like, well, we're going to play him. So that lets me know that you think he's buying me. So if they think that they can get Devin Singletary, mm. who played for Brian Dayball in Buffalo, who knows him very well, if he thinks that he can get the oh, same wow. production from Devin than he got from Saquon, that's cool. My thing is Saquon getting more money on a better team. It ain't disrespectful. No, you did him a favor, mm. and you did me a favor. Yeah, I'm, looking oh. at it, I'm looking at it from Saquon's book, how to order. You think he ain't happy right now? No, he is very happy. Come on, man. But what I'm saying yeah, is okay. he still got disrespected, in my opinion, by the George. You, you got to be tougher, bro. You got to be tougher. I am tough. Tougher. <laughs> I think you have to take the emotions out of the situation. Deserve is an emotional word. Yes, it is. We're talking about business. What you deserve, what did you earn? Mm. And... I think that the Giants didn't do a great job of handling this. I think they were weird about it. I think they overvalued Daniel Jones, and Saquon Barkley was the face of their organization. Yep. He also had some injuries. But if you don't want to pay someone and that person moves on, that's business. No doubt. Period. But this is why... You treat it like a business. I don't want to hear about what a player owes an organization Absolutely. or loyalty to a fan base or loyalty to a coach. Miss me. That Please fly as fast as you can in the other direction with all of that. I don't want right. to hear nothing about it. 
If it's a transaction, it's a transaction. We could do business. I don't want to hear about family. I don't want to hear an emotional word about loyalty and, and what you owe somebody. I owe you services. You owe me money. Mm. Anything other than that, you talking to somebody else who cares about it because I don't. And that is why I plead with players to treat the organizations with that same energy. One thing about me, I'm a match your energy. All the time. This is the energy we on? Cool. Let me just match that. And that's fine. Everything doesn't have to be about emotions. This is business. Yeah. This is a professional league. This is what they do for a living. Leave the, 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 the emotions, leave all that stuff for the fans. That's where it's supposed to be. We don't get up here crying on behalf of players that get cut, nope. that get mm -mm. traded, do that. that get lied to, mm -mm. that get told they're to coming back. They, to no, nobody talks about that, and they shouldn't because that's the business. This is a result-driven right. business. Mm -hmm. Do this thing, we pay you. Mm -hmm. Don't do this thing, you're not here. It's as simple as that. We're talking about billions of dollars, legacies, talking about jobs all the way down. Coaches get fired, the whole staff gets fired. Everybody's got to move. There's so much that goes into this. Stop making it so emotional. I know it's hard because we talk about this every day. But the Giants may have handled it poorly. It doesn't matter. Saquon got paid. He's going to move on. Just don't talk about Saquon making a bad decision because he went to the Eagles All or right. the Giants money. talking right. about what he deserves. Money. And uh, yeah. What are we doing? Are we doing a deal? We're not doing a deal? Cool. Thank you for your time. Had a nice, uh, ate a lot of nice Italian dinners in this beautiful city. I'm going to go to Philadelphia. I'm going to work hey. for them. You guys are going to be terrible this year. We'll play you. And that'll be that. <laughs> like, there's, there's nothing else to talk about here. And the other part of it is... Mm -hmm. The other part of it is, that all aside, because that applies to all players. You can't devalue running backs. You can't talk about how they, you can't give them long-term contracts and a lot of guaranteed money. You can't talk about how a committee can do the exact same as a star running back, one star running back, and a committee of running backs is the same thing. You can get the same production here and there. You can't do all that and then blame the running back for not winning the games. Either they are that important to your organization and your roster or they're not. You can't have it both ways. It can't be Saquon Barkley's fault that y'all didn't win games and then you don't want to pay Saquon Barkley a long-term deal. Make a decision. This thing with the running backs to me is the other issue here because Saquon is not responsible for the failures of the New York Giants. If you also don't want to pay Saquon, like he's responsible for the failure of the New York Giants. Yeah. So make a decision as a league, league please. How are you going to handle running backs? Because every other year it's some different stuff. And Saquon is just, that's not the case. He's, at, he's in a better place now, and that's all there is to it. Real quick before you go to break. Because um, <laughs> I'm, I'm up here and I, I think it's disrespectful the way they did Saquon, right? But... Show doing well, right? Up here at Fox Speak doing well, right? So if you go up top and you like, I've been a big part of this program and the show is killing it. And they like, we ain't got nothing for you. You ain't going to feel like disrespected, like what I have done here. I feel played. That's okay. all I'm saying. I mean, I'm saying, but yeah, and you but, might go somewhere but, else and get some money and all that, but I'm just saying with yeah, the organization, James, James, the way they the handled it, that's disrespectful. The difference is, the difference is, the difference is one, we don't have a salary cap here. We have a budget. Yeah. The there's a difference between a salary cap and a budget. Everybody has a budget. Every, every business doesn't have a salary cap. But, but they one, got money, and they're not offering you nothing? Two, but also, <laughs> also it don't matter if he's, what are you, 32? 33. 30, sorry. It don't matter if he's 33. You can be up here until you're 75. No question. So all these that. things matter. Like, it's a different business. I understand the principle of what you're free. saying. And, and, but, but, but like, like, to your point, like, yeah. every person will feel disrespected. That's all I'm saying. Every, no, no, no. Every person in any job. Yeah. If I want to raise. No question. We're not giving a raise. I'm going to feel disrespected. <laughs> but don't mean you should. That don't, but, and I don't mean it's disrespectful. That's what you're taking it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The other thing is, if you were playing this game for so long, what's, what's going on? It's been like this for years. Has it not? No. And, why and, said, and, better, and bigger players than, than, than Saquon no have got this, this thing done. Worse. So no, my no. thing is like, yeah. they did Saquon a favor. Come to the good team, <laughs> right? <laughs> Greenstar, and we're going to pay you their money. Uh, well, we have talked about the superstar players. Who, but me? No. Oh, my man. But my let's man. talk about the glue. Here are the sneaky biggest moves that have been made on the other side of the break. I'm going to get, join Dave Hellman, NFL insider, really. NFL knows all things about all things about all things to tell you all the sneaky best moves, the players you didn't read about on Twitter, but the players that are going to help the teams win Super Bowls. They're all the quiet, huge moves on the other side of the break. Next on. Oh, my boy, Dave here? Okay, Dave. What up, family? Extremely excited to join my guy, Dave Hellman. Y'all already know Dave. He joined, He hosts the NFL on Fox podcast. Dave, my favorite segment right here, because yes. we've talked about Saquon, Kirk Cousins, Russell Wilson. Y'all read it all on Twitter, but Dave's going to give you all the insight that you can't find.
find by scrolling your phone. Dave, let me start by throwing you, you an me oop. on to do the, ner the nerd on the, the nerd, nerd stuff. The nerdy the detail. Nerd well, on, I really think details. like the glue is what wins Super Bowls. Yep. It's not necessarily like the huge accessories. It's the small glue that holds things together. That's what wins Super Bowls. For me, I want to start with Eric Kendricks of the Dallas Cowboys. That is a sneaky, gigantic signing. Cowboys linebacker played last year. I would grade it a D minus, maybe an F plus for what it's worth. Eric Kendricks, he brings you back to a B. He brings you back to solid linebacker play. Remember, Demo DeMarion Overshone out of Texas, yep. drafted in the third round last year at linebacker for the Cowboys. He got hurt in the preseason. So now the Cowboys' only weak link on defense that is set. I believe that the Cowboys signing Eric Kendricks is a sneaky, gigantic addition, not to mention Mike Zimmer, new defensive coordinator. You need somebody who knows that defense. I Eric Kendricks. call the defense next year. Thank you. Eric Kendricks was an all-pro under Mike Zimmer and small thing. The players who wear the green dot, they call the defense. Yep. For the last three years, it's been a freaking safety. That is disrespectful. <laughs> Respectful. Jerron Curse, I believe, is called the defense. Now the linebacker, the person who bridges the gap, he's calling it. This is my sneaky big addition. Talk to me. I just appreciate you trying to make Cowboy fans feel better. It's usually me. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with everything you just said. I think this is a good signing. I'm going to speak for every Cowboy fan at home when I say, what else you got for me? Yep. There's two big holes on the offensive line. Don't know who's going to play running back. I don't think cornerback is as big of a problem, <clears throat> but they do still need one more, whether it's Stephon Gilmore, whether it's somebody else. This is nice, but I think every Cowboy fan watching says, what else you got for me? There's a team that won the Super Bowl two years ago, and you think they made some additions that are sneakily gigantic. Yes. Walk me through the sneaky big additions that the viewers don't know yet. These are some that I love. And, yeah, let's start with a team that I'm so high on. Down here, my guys, the L.A. Rams, obviously came out of nowhere to make the playoffs. They haven't done a ton, but what they've done is impact stuff. So my two moves that I think you need to know about, they've added two big guards. One of them, Kevin Dotson, was already there, but they yep. extended him. Great player, ranked number three, according to Pro Football Focus last year, among all guards. Good player. Then they go get Jonah Jackson, who was paving the way for the Detroit Lions last year. Now they have a phenomenal, in, phenomenal interior offensive line. Why is that a big deal? Well, Matt Stafford ain't getting any younger. Keep his pocket clean. Kyron Williams was an 1,100-yard rusher last year. I think the Rams are building this Can in Can they way. get back to the Super Bowl? It was just a year ago that Rams had coach Sean McVay said, I don't I don't know if I'm going to coach anymore. The coaching staff was bare. He said, look, if y'all want to go elsewhere, you can go elsewhere. His offensive coordinator left to go be the head coach at Kentucky in college. The staff was bare. Things were getting chaotic. Are they a Super Bowl contending team again? They still made the playoffs after everything you just said. They did. When it's all said and done, if they draft as well this year as they did last year, I think they're one of the three, four true contenders. Okay, let's keep it moving. The New York Jets. Yep. You got Morgan Moses? So we got to assume, just take this with the caveat, we're going to assume Aaron Rodgers – is playing football and not running for office this okay. year, right? Okay, okay. Okay, if we assume that, I love what the Jets are doing. They signed a veteran guard in free agency, and then they go, I love smart moves like this. Yep. They basically swap a fourth-round pick and give up a sixth to the Baltimore Ravens for one of the 10 or 11 best tackles in football last year. Morgan Moses, he's an older guy, but he can step right in and start. We know the offensive line was a problem for the Jets. I love it. Stay in the AFC. Geno Stone, seven interceptions, I think second in the NFL last yep. year. But why is that such a big deal for the Bengals? Okay, I hear what you're saying about Joe Burrow's weapons being a problem. We'll figure all that out. You know as well as I do, T. Higgins isn't going anywhere. <laughs> the defense in Cincinnati was an issue. They lost Jesse Bates to Atlanta. They lost Von Bell. Yeah. Safety was a problem for defensive coordinator Lou Anaruma. What does he do? First of all, Von Bell's back. Yeah, he said, hey, that. that was cool that you went to Carolina. Come on back and play for us instead. Geno Stone... Seven picks last year. He was a contributor in Baltimore. Now he gets a chance to start, and they only had to pay him $14 million over two years. So a good player that you didn't have to sell the farm to get, I love that addition. Okay, I talked about the Lions a lot, and people are like, hey, Acho, what do the Lions need? What do they need? I said, hey, they secondary. It don't look all that good. Plus, they lost Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. I get it. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson hurt a lot last year. But the Lions' main weakness to me defensively was in the secondary. Yeah. You think this is a big one? Yeah, it absolutely is. Look, they didn't have anybody by the end of last year. Brian Branch, the rookie, was incredible, but their cornerbacks were beat up. They didn't have anybody by the end of the year, so they make a couple smart signings. They've, they've signed three cornerbacks so far this offseason, but the, the key piece is Carlton Davis, the number one corner from Tampa. They trade a third and, and I think a sixth, not a huge trade, to get a number one corner, and no, this isn't Sauce Gardner, I don't think. This isn't that guy who's going to get you eight picks in a season, 
but he is a number one, a true corner who can be the centerpiece of that secondary. That was the Lions' biggest weakness, and they did a lot to upgrade it. And now you got one behind you. Step to me this way, my Dave, guy, if you don't mind. Jeremy Chin. Jeremy Chin. Yeah. Now, this the Commanders have done a, a lot. They've got Ertz, oh, they got Wagner, they got Biotis, so they got a bunch of big names, but you put Jeremy Chin down there. He only got $4 million. Why we even care about this? So, it, it, you, this is for the nerds, right? But I think this is, I love when you see signings like this from new coaches. Dan Quinn comes from the Cowboys, who I cover. Dan Quinn loves good safety play. We know that going all the way back to Seattle, but even in Dallas, he got the most out of his safeties. Jeremy Chin's a good player yeah. who I think the Carolina Panthers forgot how to use. I think Dan Quinn knows he can come down in the box, tackle. He's probably not a guy you want to drop back in coverage, but he can be that versatile, big nickel, pseudo linebacker that's gotten so popular in the NFL these days. For $4 million, I think he's going to be one of Dan Quinn's key additions in this Washington defense. Just something to watch. I think this is a guy that's going to make 100-plus tackles this year. You were a key addition to this show and absolutely something to watch whenever you are on. Appreciate it, Dave Hellman. When we return, several quarterbacks, they have been on the move all offseason, but Justin Fields is still in place in Chicago. What does that mean about Fields? You think there's a market for him? If there was, wouldn't he be gone already? Uh, We'll find out what Shady James and Joy got to say. That's next on Speak. All right, family, we are in overtime and a little bewildering. Justin Fields is still on the Chicago Bears. It's just, it's kind of weird. Again, Kirk Cousins, he moved. Shady, Russell Wilson, he's moved. Matt Jones, he's moved on. Uh, Sam Darnold, he's moved on. It's just a little head scratching, if you will. So Justin Fields, he's still on the Bears, but the Bears have the first round pick. And remember, number one overall pick and Caleb Williams is coming out the draft. So I genuinely was thinking about this confused. So you at home, I wanted to bring some insight to it. A lot of brilliant minds up here at the desk with varying opinions. Shady, you go first. You got two Super Bowls. You played the longest at the desk. You got 12 years. You've been traded. You've been released. You've been drafted. You've been... You never got released? Ain't you crazy? <laughs> been released? The Chiefs didn't release you? No. I not know you do. Yeah, I never been released. <laughs> Yo, look, start this whole segment over. Hold on. <laughs> I'm not one of those at all. You never got released? Bro, no. I did. I did. Only time I got released is I asked the Bills. We couldn't get the money right. Okay, so you've been released. So no, you've no, been no, released. no, 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 no. It's not the same. <laughs> The pay, I want to do the pay cut thing. Yeah, yeah. So you're released. Re- 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 no, no, no. Release is. I'm Googling this. The release Keep is. Talking. There's no options. He has to be released. Oh, okay. That matters, though. No, 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 no. So you have to be broken there's, up there's with. Some, there's some players that <laughs> they don't get no questions. They look, man. Yeah. Thanks for everything. No doubt. I got There's I got, other players that coming up. Hold on. Hey, I got McCoy released. McCoy was. Hold on, hold on. McCoy was released oh. during final roster cuts hey, on hey. August 31st, 2019. Mm. I'm just telling you what happened. Mama said to be I got in the like room this. with uh, Brandon Bean uh-huh. and Sean McDermott. We had a whole conversation. And we started talking about this. this they said uh, we don't pay cut. I was like, pay cut. I started going, I started running down the whole offense. Them dudes is weak. You got yeah. this dude. I don't say the name. You want, you want me to take a pay cut? And I said what I said to him. Yeah. I don't want to say it on air. We don't want your and, service. I, and I walked off. You know what I mean? <laughs> they called my agent. I said, I don't care what they saying. Let me go. Da, da, da. And I had other teams. I had like four, five, six, seven teams that wanted me. So if you want to say release, I mean, I guess. Yeah. But there's some guys don't have no conversations. They're going to say, Joey Taylor, thanks for everything. Yeah. You felt disrespected? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What's up? What's up? <laughs> I love this show. Um, all right, Shady, let's get back on track. Justin Fields. Oh, he, he, he's guy. still in Chicago. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. in the world is going on, Shady? Well, every, Why? Everybody keeps making a big deal. What's the rush for? Right? The, the draft for another month or so. What's the rush? And then the biggest question that you got to ask yourself, and I hate to say it, but I've been saying it all year. How many teams are sitting there begging the Bears, we want Justin Fields? Please, can we get him? <laughs> Who's doing that, though? Honestly, not a, nobody. Not a lot of people, though. <laughs> so they got to sit in his wait. Let's wait this thing out. And I think as, a, as time progresses, as they get close to the, to the draft, you'll see some things happening. But nobody's beating out the door for Justin Fields. I mean, you've seen him for the last couple of years. Yeah. But, Joy, to me, it's a game of musical chairs. We all play musical chairs. Maybe it's a church picnic. Maybe it's a cookout, whatever the case may be. And eventually, when chairs start to fill up, if that music stops and you still stand and you lose, mm-hmm. chairs are filling up. The Steelers got a quarterback, chair filled up. Good. The Falcons got a quarterback, chair filled up. Good. The Vikings might have a quarterback. Gave Sam Darnold $10 million, chair filled up. Oh, Seats are Raiders, starting to Minshew fill up. Money. Correct. Now, I don't know if he's the number one, but they no, did give him no, money. But that, so, that where I'm at, Joy, is like the Bears – 
still holding on to Justin Fields, but people are sitting in these seats and the music is starting to wind down. What the heck does it Wait, say? Sam Darnold, I, I mean, that chair is not just filled. It's that's, not filled. But that's, you know when you're fighting? <laughs> you know when you're fighting with that no, person? He, there's, there's two cheeks on the seat. Yeah. Facts. He's not, oh no, he not sitting down. He's, he's, he's next to it. Like, he's about to sit down. He ain't. <laughs> he's about to sit down. Oh, oh, he so ain't even got a seat Slow chair. Slow down, down, Sammy. <laughs> Whoa, you need, to, you need to stand. He ain't even got a seat <laughs> chair. Oh, take it easy. What's it mean, Joy? Oh, what in the world man. does it mean? I think they're overestimating the market for Justin Fields, for That's one. It. Because this is a quarterback Bing. position. People want old quarterback. They want backup quarterbacks. They want third-string quarterbacks. That's true. They'll take whatever you got. Trubisky got a job, huh? Mm -hmm. They'll take whatever you got. Got to be a god. You, you got to have depth at the quarterback position. That is what we've learned over the past couple years. So this position, even if you're not going somewhere as a starter, still has extreme value. Ask the San Francisco 49ers. So I think they've overestimated what he's worth to other teams as far as what they're willing to give them. Mm -hmm. So to me, I think they're being greedy. They Ooh, want more. I like they, I mean, I like this. No, it's true. Justin Fields is a young quarterback, who's a first-round draft pick. So, and even if he struggled, he still has. You know, this people convince themselves that they can make somebody better. Oh, he ain't good with y'all. We can fix him. But also, he has physical talent. So, he has value in the league. But what is the value to you? Is it a fifth-round pick? Is it a sixth-round pick? You're not going to get what the Bears probably want for him. Otherwise, he would be gone. You, you mentioned some names, okay? Like, the, those guys are not better right now than Justin Fields. They're not. And they're certainly not as young, and they don't have the ability to develop anymore. He does. So there's a lot of upside to Justin Fields, but we're not going to give you a high draft pick for him. So if they're being greedy, which it seems like, because these other seats are filling up, then you, you overestimated the market for him. Yeah. He can't be there when Caleb Williams is drafted. No. He cannot be in the building. You do not. Don't do that, yeah. Chicago. <laughs> do not have him in the building. So to me, it seems like they're, they're, they pushed too long, they asked for too much, and now the seats are filling up and they didn't realize that the market for Justin Fields isn't what they thought it was, mm -hmm. which, is, which should also clear up whether or not, which obviously we know is happening now, obviously Caleb Williams is going mm -hmm. to be the choice that you should make because the league will answer your questions based off of what the market is. So that's what I think is happening. <sighs> that, that, that's my question to you guys right now. My question to you guys is, is it, 100% that Justin Fields will be gone. Because I agree with, hold on, I agree with Joy. Me and the Chicago Bears value Justin Fields <laughs> way up here. The league is telling us we may value him as Mac Jones, a six-round pick to the Jacksonville Jaguars. First round quarterback, had some moments, mm. played well. Mm, Even Mac Jones went to the Pro Bowl, right? We don't want you, Mac Jones. We know you're not our quarterback. We know we're drafting a quarterback. You're gone. Justin Fields still there. You're not getting a second round, third round for Justin Fields. One thing I learned is the longer you wait, the price goes down. I'm not whether sure. It's free agents, whether it's free agency, whether it's trading, the price goes down. Nobody's about to get hurt in OTAs to where another quarterback spot is James, going to just let, open up. Let me submit this one for everybody's consideration. Remember when the Cardinals drafted Kyler Murray? Josh Rosen was still on the roster. Mm -hmm. We knew Josh Rosen wasn't a great player. We'd only seen him for one year, but it wasn't great. The Cardinals traded Josh Rosen after drafting Kyler Murray to the Miami Dolphins mm -hmm. for a second-round pick and a fifth-round pick. Yeah. I do think that a team like the Vikings, they're, trading, they're drafting like 13th or something like that. Yeah. If they can't trade up, a team like, it's not necessarily the Raiders, because where are the Raiders at? Like uh, 10? Around, around there, 13. it's like 12, 13. Bet. If the Raiders can't trade up, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, if the Raiders can't get Drake May or can't get Jaden Daniels or can't get Penix or obviously won't get Caleb, then I think in the draft, they might be like, okay, we can get him with our first, we'll use our third. Couldn't get him with our first. I don't think that his value is decreasing right now. I think they'll probably trade him potentially, Joy, James, Shady, on draft why, day. Why, what would change? There's so many teams that need quarterbacks that, or that are needed ahead of them. Quarterbacks. Or, yeah, so the, or that needed that filled it. Exactly. So, like, the, how far up? What are you, you going to, like, discover extra picks that you had? No, like you I know think, what you're. You know what you have to be able. What to I work think with is, it. you know, how, well, we, we all kind of know how it goes. Is on draft day, mo a lot of teams are trying to move. Yeah. Everybody not gonna be able to move up. Yeah. Vikings right. or the Raiders, one of them teams not gonna move up. I think it's the team that can't move up. Is like, you yeah. know what? Let me go get. Yeah, let but me go get Justin. number one, uh, the Rosen situation. I mean, it's a it's a solid comparison, but that's one. 
terrible, terrible year. You had a new coach coming in there that, that was Kyler Murray's coach, mm-hmm. and he wanted his guy that my, you ran my system. And the fan base That's wasn't totally playing for different. Josh Rosen. This dude has been with your team for three years, four years, whatever it may be, had ups and downs and all that. So for me, that, that's a totally different situation. That's why I said, I don't truly know he's completely out of that door. I don't think it's out of the question for the Chicago Bears to say, we could not ship him. We do not want to just let our, our guy walk out of here with a sixth, seventh round pick. You know what? Everybody want Caleb Williams. Let's get three, four first round picks for him and let's see what we can do. I don't think that's off the table for the Chicago Bears. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Family, we got to get out of this segment. More speak on the other side of this commercial break. Shady just shaking his head. Shady, I appreciate your composure, man. I appreciate your composure. But every year they're threatening to break up with him, though. So how would y'all, as players, players feel about that? They came in the same mistake again, man. I remember I was in what, like fourth, fifth grade, and uh, I was doing something wrong or something, and. He was like, y'all believe in God, the, 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 the pastor. He gave me a story about, I don't know who the Bible guy was at the time. He was like, he trusting in God, and, guy. and he was stuck on an island. A yacht came past. You want to go to the right? He said, nah, I'm good. God got me. A yacht came boat, past in the Bible? A, a, boat, a boat came through. Yo, you want to? Nah, I'm good. The dude on the island, he dies because he didn't have no full head, nothing. What story is he talking about? God, it's not a real story. You ain't protect me. He said, bruh, I sent you I a yacht, a boat, a whale. So Chicago, you had the first red, the first pick last year. You said we good with Justin Fields. You kept going. Now you got a yacht coming in. Yo, <laughs> man, yo. Taylor Williams is what you're trying yo, to say. Yo, yo, I, I start doing my jumping. Da, da, da. Can I get an A? Holla. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we have had way too much fun on this show and on today's show. James Jones, you think that Caleb Williams will not be a Chicago Bear and it will be Justin Fields? I'm not saying I don't think that's going to happen. I'm saying that I truly believe it's a possibility that Justin Fields can stay there and they trade that number one. Why he ain't possible. gone? Why he ain't gone yet? You trade him on the draft thing. Uh, that's where my money at. Justin Fields playing quarterback for the Bears. Ooh. So they're going to they gonna, they gonna miss the yacht? They gonna miss the boat. yacht. You said the whale. The whale gone. <laughs> the yacht gone. The, uh, boat, the boat was nice, but we that's gone too. Family. <laughs> Appreciate y'all hanging with us. You could watch any show. You take 90 minutes out of your day to watch yacht. us. I'll tell you that. <laughs> what then a what? I'd rather sink on a yacht.